Hey everyone, I'm Shaylin with Readsy, and today I'm going to be talking about purple prose, what it is, and how to avoid it. Ever read a book with language so ornate and flowery that you just didn't even really know what it was trying to say anymore? That's purple prose. It's a pet peeve of many readers, and for good reason. It can make the writing confusing, and it just feels like it's trying too hard to impress you when it's really kind of doing the opposite, it's just turning you away from the book. It's difficult and frustrating to read, and unlike well-done poetry, it's usually melodramatic and cliché. Purple prose is writing so elaborate and ornate that it draws excessive attention to itself and often causes clarity issues. It's pretty just for the sake of being extremely pretty, but in reality, it's just difficult to read. Some characteristics of purple prose are lots of multisyllabic words, run-on sentences, piles of adjectives and adverbs, convoluted phrasing, and needlessly long paragraph. It can also feel like the writer was so deeply in love with their thesaurus that they turned to it for basically every word that isn't an article. Now, purple prose isn't the same as just elaborate or dense language. Many writers have more fanciful or floral or figurative writing styles, and it's not purple. More elaborate writing can be really beautiful. The difference is that purple prose is just overblown, and it doesn't actually add anything to the story. If your writing actually is falling into the purple category, which many writers won't do consistently, but just at times the writing will be a bit too purple, here are some things you can do to fix it. Number one, remove redundant adjectives and adverbs. Purple prose often suffers from long strings of adjectives. Someone's eyes don't need to be crystalline, clear, azure, sparkling orbs. That's a lot of adjectives just to describe that someone has bright blue eyes. You also want to look for obscure words. Now sometimes there is a really specific word that's maybe not used too commonly that really makes a sentence, but if it feels like you have used a thesaurus for every single word, that might be a problem. Using too many really obscure words can make the writing difficult. Even if it seems intellectual, it kind of just impedes the flow of the writing. You also want to reduce sentence length. Now, sentence rhythm is a really important part of creating a flow and melody to your writing, and you want a very sentence length, and it's okay to have longer sentences, but if all of your sentences are really long, and especially if they're run-ons, that can lead to really purple writing. You want to look for points where you're being unnecessarily convoluted, since this can really impact the clarity, and in essence, Good writing is clear. If your reader can't understand what you're saying, it doesn't really matter how impressive the sentence looks. Be careful not to refer to things in obscure, vague, convoluted ways. Let's take an example. This is from Sean Penn's Bob Honey Who Just Do Stuff. The book was kind of notorious for its purple prose, and here's an example. There is pride to be had where the prejudicial is practiced with precision in the trenchant triage of tactile terminations. We could revise this to just be, we can take pride in the act of hunting if it is practiced with care. The first one, honestly, it would probably take me a good 10 minutes to just sit down and read that and figure out what it actually meant, whereas with the revised version, I actually know what's being said. Make sure you're writing in your voice and not someone else's. It's okay to admire other writers and even learn through imitation. Oftentimes, writers will see something they really like and kind of start to incorporate it into their own style, and that's how they build their style. However, forcing your writing to be something that it isn't can often result in purple prose. The reader can kind of tell that too too much effort was put into the prose. Make sure you're focusing on the substance of your story. If you lose sight of the character or plot, prose can get really purple because there's nothing to make it substantial. Prose is important, but if you only put effort into the language and not the character or plot, there won't be any substance for that prose to describe. Next up, don't overuse a thesaurus. Now, a thesaurus is a great tool, and I pretty much always have a thesaurus open when I'm writing, but you don't want to be turning to it for every word. I would also say that when you're using a thesaurus, use it as a tool to remind you of words you already know, rather than pick the most obscure word that seems the most fancy that you don't know. Once I heard of a writer who put manipulative into a thesaurus, she wanted a better word, and she ended up using gerrymandering, not knowing what gerrymandering was, and the sentence didn't convey its actual meaning at all. She was trying to describe a person who was manipulative, and she ended up saying that he was very gerrymandering. And finally, put yourself in the reader's shoes. Sometimes you have to be honest with yourself. Is this a paragraph you're really proud of because it would really intrigue a reader and you think there's actual substance there? 
or is it more just literary showboating? If you struggle to put yourself in the reader's shoes and kind of see your book with fresh eyes, it can be really helpful to get a second opinion. Beta readers are really helpful for this. Now if you do want to learn how to write some nice descriptions without making your prose too purple, you can check out this video on how to write descriptions. Have any of you ever struggled with purple prose? I definitely have. I My writing style is definitely more into the elaborate figurative category and so I've definitely struggled with my writing being purple at times. Thank you so much for watching and remember to subscribe for new writing, editing, and publishing videos every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.